So today we're going to be installing and reviewing the Halo View BT12 backup camera. But it's more than just a backup camera. I think you're gonna like this, so stick around. Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to Why Wait. I'm Chris and today I want to talk to you about a product review and a product installation that I'm currently going to be hooking up today and that is a new backup camera from Halo View. They just released this product right here this January and they actually contacted me and they were curious if I would do a review on it and a video on the installation process so I told them sure I would check it out now, if you've seen some of my other videos, you know, I'm not, I don't have a backup camera. I'm really not too crazy about using them. I really never needed one. In fact, we have another video where I talk about using just basic video call like iPhone uh, FaceTime to back up. One person stands back there. They just call you on FaceTime. And that way, when you're backing up, you can actually see the back of your camera as it's moving around, which I prefer versus a backup camera showing you what's behind you. I actually like to see the vehicle itself. I think it's a neat little trick. You can go check out that video if you want to see that method. But what I do like about this is it's not just a backup camera. This is also a dash camera, which is a huge must if you're going to be RVing and pulling these big rigs. The biggest thing for us is it also comes with this 10 inch LCD screen and it's going to be Bluetooth compatible. It's going to have Apple CarPlay. It's going to play your apps, your navigation system, anything on your phone that you can do through here. It's voice command activated. Show rear camera. Okay. Show front camera. Okay. <laughs> All that good stuff. And for somebody like me who has an older truck, a 2008 F450, we don't have Bluetooth. We don't have Apple CarPlay. We don't have a nav system. In fact, if I want to listen to any music on my phone, I have to use an old school auxiliary cable still to plug in. So I think I'm really going to like that. I think I'm really going to like this feature that I can now have an observation camera maybe when I'm driving, which I'll probably use more than the uh, backup camera. I'll probably use it more as an observation camera. I think I'm going to enjoy the dash cam and I think I'm going to enjoy the touch screen and the Apple CarPlay. It also works with Android phones as well. So let's go ahead, let's open this box, check out everything inside of it, and we'll get down to it. Okay, we finally got some beautiful weather here, so I thought I'd just lay it all out outside right here. And you can see, they give you uh, quite a bit of stuff here. So we got a lot of stuff to go through, but you can basically see the uh, the 10 inch screen right here, which is really nice. It's you know a touch screen, uh, the power filter. This is going to be the dash cam. The backup camera, they give you various ways to mount it. You can mount the suction cup mounted to your window. You can also mount this right to your rear view mirror. You can see, you can strap that right onto your mirror if you want to use it that way, which I think would be real nice if you're not driving like truck and you don't need the mirror. Um, they give you a mounting plate. You can actually just mount it right onto a flat spot in your dash, which would be nice. And they're going to give you plenty of cords, extra things. If you want to run the... Instead of maybe using the dash cam, you can install this on the back of your truck window to help you backing up. You got plenty of wire to run all that. It comes with plenty of screws and cable ties and dust wipes, different sets of antennas to hook with it, magnetic mounts, antennas, all kind of stuff. So we're going to go through this. I want to see if we can get it hooked up and installed. So like most of you probably have, I had the Furion pre-install mounting kit up on the back of my camper right here. Uh, for the first time ever, I went ahead and took it down to see what's behind there. And it turns out there is a cable coming out of there. So it looks like it's going to be an easy install. Unfortunately, the four screws that go into the back of the camper are not going to line up with the new mount. So here's the backup camera we're going to be installing. And you can see the four screws here. Uh, this pattern right here does not line up with the same pattern that these had. So I'm going to have to screw some new holes into the camper, which I never like doing. On the back of our solitude up there, you can see I already, I already took the Furion mount down, and there's a little cable sticking out. And I'm going to be able to hopefully just easily plug that right into here and be all wired up. I'll clean that up and remount this. And then this comes with a wire that you screw on right here. Run the wire to the top of your cam uh, camper, and there's a little antenna you can set up there to get to make sure you get a good signal, a good wireless signal from your truck to the backup camera. 
excuse the dirtiness of the camper as well. It's uh, March. We're just getting through the winter months here in the mountains, so we haven't had the time or the good weather to start cleaning things up yet. But you can see I removed the old one, and we have this simple wire running out that we're going to plug right into and hopefully be able to mount that up pretty easy here. But to connect to this, Halo provides you with this simple little connector right here, adapter, and this should be able to plug right into here and plug into your camera to hook it up nice and easy. Now I will say for all the stuff they provide, and we have screen protectors and all kind of things like that with the glare resistance, all that good stuff. Here is the user manual right here, and they kind of dropped the ball in my opinion on this a little bit. Um, it does not go into detail very well at all. You kind of got to have to know a little bit about wiring just in case. You may have to wire something up yourself. If you don't have the already pre-installed Ferion connection, you're probably going to have to use this right here. And you're probably going to have to run these wires and you're probably going to have to start taking a um, the cover off a tail light and splicing into that. And, you know, doing some wiring on your own. And, and, you know, obviously you're going to figure that one out. They don't they don't get into that at all in the book. In fact, they don't get into a lot of the wiring at all. They don't tell you what this is for. Um, they don't really tell you what any of these are for. After you mess around with it a little bit, it starts to become a little bit self-explanatory. You kind of start to figure out, okay, what do I need just to make all the connections? But in the beginning, it can be a little, a little daunting trying to figure out exactly what everything is. Okay, so I'm going to go and take the backup slash observation camera. I'm gonna go ahead and get that screwed in mounted and then we'll go from there. Okay, we're up on top of the camper. We just got the backup camera all installed, screwed in. We just gotta go ahead and just clean up around here and get it all nice and clean. After I clean the camper up, I'm gonna go ahead and put a bead of uh, sealant around here and seal that up real nice. Connect the antenna. This is gonna help with the wireless signal. Now, I'm not too sure where I'm going to mount this yet but it'll be somewhere up here. And uh, let's go ahead and jump down in the truck and finish up. Ugh. Okay. We got the backup camera all set on the camper. Now let's go ahead and hook everything up in here. And I will say that I did come in here earlier real quick before I installed anything. And I just plugged in the power source to the screen after I did hook the camera up just to make sure that I was getting signal um, from the camera on the back of the camper. And it was good to go, it was all set. And there is one button I'll show you that you do have to press, and it does switch between a North America signal and a uh, European or English signal. And just a heads up on that, that, that can have something to do with if you're not getting uh, any screen to your backup camera. So, okay, let's go ahead and jump into this and finish getting this installed. And then we're going to go ahead and break it down, review it, and uh, try it out for a little while and see how it is. So, kind of nice. A few different spots you can mount this. You can hook it right to your rear view mirror, which is really nice if you're towing, because you don't really need that mirror anyways. And you can use this as basically your rear view mirror, because you can use it as an observation mirror and see what's going on behind your camper the whole time you're driving. So that's cool. But we drive this truck, light truck, a lot when we're not towing. And when we're not towing, we do need the mirror, so yeah, I could pop it off. But the thing is, one of the bonuses for me that I love so much about this is now with this older truck, I have access to Apple CarPlay, my music, a touchscreen, a GPS on here, all the things I don't have on my 450 dash from 2008 here. So I'm pretty much going to always want this in the truck and always want this running with my dash cam and all the other features it has. So that kind of rules out putting it up here. Now it also comes with a base plate, a mounting base plate. And you can actually take some screws right out of the bottom here, mount it right to this 3M tape, even use a couple little screws and you can permanently basically attach this right onto your dash if you have a nice flat spot somewhere. Uh, I really actually don't have a nice flat spot somewhere that this would go very good. There's a few places I could kind of try it. I wouldn't like it too much. It'd kind of be out of my reach. Plus, I'm not too crazy about leaving this up in my dash 24-7, uh, just inviting somebody to come into the truck and, you know, break in an extra thing they could steal. Plus, I don't like leaving these things in the sun sometimes, even though I'm sure they're okay with it. But So I think I'm going to go with the window cup suction mount. It has a powerful magnet that can stick on the back of here, and I kind of just got that lined up right now. 
and I just snap it right on here. I can reach it nice. I like where it's at. I can easily pop it right back off here, put it away out of sight, out of mind for those thieves out there. I think I'm going to go that route, but I like the fact that it has a couple different features and a couple different options, uh, whatever suits you guys best. Now, I will say this is an extremely stiff, rugged, hard to move little uh, extension bar here. You can move it, get it twisted how you want. And then it comes with a couple of these little mounts right here. So if you want to take pressure and weight off of it, you can just pop those down in there. And that gives you a nice, stable uh, mounting surface. Because I was a little worried about this kind of bouncing around, especially in this truck here. You know, get pretty bouncy in these big trucks. But uh, we'll take it down the road after we get it on here and see how it does. But I feel like that's pretty sturdy, like it's going to hold up pretty good. And by the way, we will have links to the Halo View BT-12 camera down below Amazon links and links to the website. So you can go check it out. Maybe look at some of their other products that again, this is a brand new one that was pretty much just released in January. It was sent to us to review, do an installation video, see how we like it, check it out so far. I've been pretty impressed, but I do want to use it for a few months, see how I still like it going down the road and things like that. If it's still holding up, if you know, everything's still working good. So you can check out all those links down below as well and guys if you like the video we always appreciate a big thumbs up subscribe if you haven't if you guys like videos on rv maintenance product reviews rv how to's diy projects and things like that so i'm gonna go ahead and get the dash cam mounted up here find a spot that i like for it kind of out of the way where it has a good view get that mounted and then i'll go ahead and just kind of run all the wires and hide all the wires uh the best i can i'm sure i'll run them up through my uh upper visor area up here and around the dash and glove box and right down to the cigarette lighter because you're gonna need yeah you're gonna need everything to come back to the cigarette lighter because this little doohickey right here you're gonna put two antennas on here and this is pretty much going to power the whole system so and i do like it that i have the basic 12 volt cigarette lighter kind of down out of the way so it's actually a good spot for this. It will kind of be out of the way. I can still reach it, but it's not going to be like hitting my knee or something like that. So it's kind of nice to provide you a couple of static stickers, which is just a clear little sticker that you can stick on the window before mounting the real sticky 3M um, piece. That way, when it's time to remove it, it's not all stuck on your window and this and that. You can remove that static film nice and easy. But I kind of got that dash cam lined up good where I want it, kind of hidden behind my mirror out of sight. And just slips on just as easy as that. We're going to go ahead and run these wires up through here, down and around. We're going to bring it all back to this little gizmo right here. Now with this main power system right here, you can see this is going to plug right in here. And you can bend it, kind of move it a little bit. Uh, a little obtrusive right there, especially once you put a couple of little, little antennas on it. Now it does have two little USBs down here so you can plug in other things and charge your phones, which I like. Now, if my power was a little bit lower and this was say mounted down here, I would probably keep it like that. But I think I'm gonna actually keep mine upside down. I think I'm gonna mount mine like that upside down. And then you still have your cables you can hook up here for your phone and the antennas can obviously turn. So I think I like that a little bit better. Okay guys, we got it all set up and installed. I'm gonna go ahead and show you what it looks like, show you some of the screens, talk about some of the features. And uh, within the next few days, hopefully we can get out and start using it. We won't be towing anything right now, but I can show you what the camera looks like, looking back and switching views and things like that. So you can see I got the screen. It's, it's pretty nice and sturdy right here. You got that extra mount back there to hold it kind of nice and tight. Uh, we got the dash cam up here, kind of out of the way as well. Uh, we're looking backwards right now. And then we have the power plugged into the power uh, point cigarette lighter right here. I think the picture looks really good. And as you can see, I basically have it up in a mode as if I was towing and wanted to use it as a rear view camera observation mode. Because I have the things on the left of me just like they're supposed to be. Now you can come down and press this button right here. And as you press the button, you'd see it's going to flip the camera upside down. And then it's going to flip it. Now you can see that Montana is on the left hand side of me. So basically now it's just kind of like a camera looking out. So if you look behind me, that Montana is actually over there. So you wouldn't want it on this view driving down the road because you would think, oh, here comes a car up this side about to pass me on the left-hand side. And that's not true. You know, that Montana is actually over there on that side. So that's what this button right here does. It switches things back and forth on your rear view camera. Now, this button right here is going to switch between that one uh, mode I was talking about, between the 
North American signal for your camera and the European or English uh, signal. I'm not too sure which one it was, but I know if you just hold this down and switch this, uh, if you're not getting the right signal, your backup camera is not going to work. So that's kind of an easy fix to notice with that. Now, this is a touch screen, which I like. And here's a feature I love. We now can do Apple CarPlay, Bluetooth. You can still listen to your FM radio. Uh, tons of settings. You can operate the music from right here. Now you can see we went straight to CarPlay, got my phone hooked up. So we can still look at the dash cam or we can have the backup camera. We can pull up our maps while we're driving now and have GPS system, which we always use. So that's great versus, you know, this was just a basically old school, put your navigation CD in there, nothing we ever used. We just had the phone mounted here and always used our phone. So the fact that we have all these features and apps that you have on the phone, you can connect it to your, you know, messages and phone and all that stuff. When you want to go back to the dash cam settings and all that stuff right here, Tap back on that. If you want to switch to the front screen, now we have the split screen. We have our, what our dash cam is showing, backup cam. You can switch to the whole dash cam and just see the whole picture. And again, that's a very bright, nice screen. I, I think the uh, resolution is very nice and you can change all that in settings. It also has some voice activated stuff. You can say, show rear camera. Okay. Show front camera. Okay. And she just kind of says okay every time you switch. But if you want to tap this, tap that, it shows up a, v a few of the voice command lists, which is kind of nice to know. You can decide if you want it to record sound or not. So right now it would record sound. You can shut the sound off. You can lock screen, take a picture. Okay. <laughs> she obviously just heard me say that as well. And then if you want to go back to the home button, you can go to settings, has tons of different options. You can choose camera formats, resolutions, all that kind of stuff. How long you want the loop recording to be one minute, three minute, five minute recording before it starts re-recording over itself. Stream media, uh, screensaver, if you want to leave this going while you're parked and things like that. Uh, in fact, parking time. I'm going to set that up to never. You can get rid of that beep too if you don't like it. Change the brightness here. And another feature that it has, and you're not going to be able to see it right now. I'll come back here and show it to you tonight. But by pressing this, you can actually turn on the light for the backup camera. There's a big bright LED light on the backup camera. So if you're backing up at night and you want to light that up and try to see it on your screen, you can press that button and the light's going to come on. We've never used a backup camera, but I think this would be kind of neat going down the road and using it more as a observation camera and a rear view mirror to see what's going on behind us while we're towing. And hopefully we'll get some of the footage of that for you guys here pretty soon. So that's it for the installation. Pretty easy process. Again, the hardest thing could be doing your rear view camera on the camper if you don't already have a Furion uh, pre-wired system back there they can easy, easily do a plug and play seems like a pretty nice system pretty happy with the resolution and how the way everything works pretty seamless the installation wasn't too bad there's a few things i don't like and one is that i can't really remove the front dash cam i know these things are usually rated for like 140 150 degree heat so they're usually okay in the front window Sometimes they get in the way of my sunshades I like to put up though. Wish the camera would have been wired so that you could unplug it, have the wire dangling there and then take your camera and put it away like in the glove box or something like that. But besides just that factor, um, everything seems to be pretty nice. It came with a lot of uh, a lot of wire clips, a lot of 3M sticky pads, a lot of things to help you mount and figure out how you want to do it. So I did appreciate that. The screen seems real nice. And again, I can just pop it off of there, put it in my center console, take it inside. And when I get going down the road, I'll do another video for you guys, let you know how it's been holding up for a few months. If I still like everything, if it's still working good and all that kind of stuff, we'll, we'll touch base on this again, let you know how the whole system's been holding up. But I think it's a great product if you're looking for something and you have an older truck especially and you don't have Bluetooth, you don't have Apple CarPlay, you don't have a GPS screen, you're kind of using everything on your phone, Maybe you're plugging into an auxiliary jack to listen to music or have the uh, GPS come through your truck speakers like I am. So now to have a nice, beautiful screen like this where I can pull up my GPS, 
I can have my music, I can see my dash cam and backup camera all in one spot. I really like that. So not just for the towing aspect, but when I'm just driving my truck around, just light truck, everyday driving, which we do a good bit of in this truck. So I'll be happy to have that. I think that's gonna be a nice feature for us. And as always, get out there, start your full-time RV adventure because why wait? We'll see you guys next week.